gonna run a marathon. What? The yoga version of a marathon. I'm gonna do 108 sun salutations. Aren't you too fat to do that much exercise? Well, actually, anyone can do a marathon, and this is like a marathon that you don't even have to train for. You're I do think that you should be able to live your life while whatever state of body that you're in at that current moment in time. But I'm sick of these people just going off the assumption that you could just do everything that you want to do and the size of your body does not impede you in any way. It's obvious that if you're missing legs, you're not going to be able to run as far as a guy with legs. In the same way that if you weigh 100 or 200 pounds extra on top of another normal human being size, then you probably are not going to be as productive, physically speaking, compared to that other person. Like mentally speaking, also, you probably have some incompatibilities as well like i've heard people say that when you're very very fat you're tired more you have more aches and pains therefore that's going to impede your ability to think solid on things like that and for me especially like i always wish to be as cognitively aware as humanly possible so i would not want to be i would not want to be in a bracket like that but these people are almost kind of like purposefully ignorant like they know that it's not a good thing and they probably like i've literally seen these fat people do like oh yoga sessions where they're just sitting down for 90 percent of it and they just move their legs back and forth and maybe they move their hands up in the air or to the side or a little like the t posing or something like that and they just go like yep guys that's it we're doing a great job and i'm just thinking like you guys are not even doing anything like what's the point of yoga if you guys are just like sitting down 90 percent of the time but you should be able to do whatever you want like if this is what you want to do it's fine it's just like I'm just sick of these people not acknowledging that there are going to be issues when you're 350 pounds and you want to do yoga. Why not just like lose weight, weight, lose weight first and then after you lose weight or you can do yoga while you're losing weight, fine, but try to lose weight and then after you're not so big, after you're not as big blacked as you once were, then you can sit there and finally do proper yoga instead of like doing this like poor man's version of it but go off well, queen actually anyone can do a marathon and this is like a marathon that you yeah and she's not using marathon as in like the actual marathon where people run however many miles it is she means like if you were to have a marathon of watching the office like you're doing it one after another after another it's like a long session version so a long session version of yoga any exercise that is good any exercise is good but it's just really weird that they would use the lowest calorie version of an exercise yoga and like i would i'm, I'm very interested in seeing what she's going to be doing for. you're not offended that i just said you're fat i don't love it actually i mean i am fat so thanks for noticing and Dude, it's very obvious to notice. That's a crazy ass thing to say. Like, thanks for noticing I'm fat. Dude, it's obvious that you're fat. What do you mean, thank you? And it's not even, it's not a flex to be fat. It's actually very easy to be fat. You know what I'm talking about? That's like somebody saying like, good job on being a crackhead. Like you just, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you just basically fed into your poor behavior and now you're just doing the thing that you probably shouldn't be doing to begin with. Like it's not hard to be fat. Anybody could be fat. I could be fat right now. And matter of fact, I know there are a lot of people out there that go, David, you're a naturally thin person. So like, I don't think you've ever had experience being fat. You're right. I've never had the experience of being fat, but I've also had the experience of having love handles, dude. I've been in the gym before, and I remember when I was going through my time where I was like a gym girly, and I was going every single day, and I was eating tons and tons of protein and things such and so forth, and I remember one day looking in the mirror when I was like taking a shower, and I was like admiring the biceps, or I was like, damn, the biceps looking real good, and then I looked at myself, and I was like, what the fuck is that? And I had some love handle action, and I was gaining a little bit too much weight for my liking, and I decided to dial it back a little bit so I didn't have the love handles. And if that's what you like, I know some ladies out there do like the love handle action. Um, I don't think it looks very good on men. And plus, it doesn't look very good to be skinny fat in general. You probably want to pick one or the other. It's either skinny or fat. It's very it's very weird to be skinny and fat simultaneously. It's like kind of like having a thick penis. Like, it's cool to have a long penis. And then optimally, you want a long penis with the thickness as well. But if you're working with a tree stump, it's very jarring to look at somebody with that big shit that's very, very wide. It's like a big tip almost, right? So, yeah, I mean, you could do some stuff with it. I'm sure some people like it. But optimally, you want a longer meat than a thicker meat, right? And preferably, you want the best of both worlds, but a little bit longer than, than thicker. Anyway, I don't even know what we're talking about. Being fat isn't a bad thing. Well, sometimes Says who? Being fat is not a bad thing in a what sense, dude. Like, these people are probably looking at it in a very, very convoluted sense. Like, yes, it's not bad to be fat if you're, like, stranded on a desert island. And, like, the only thing you can eat are, like, coconuts. And, like, you and Wilson have to sit there and suck on coconuts for the next, like, 15 years. It's probably okay. But... If you're like living in a society where society pretty much requires you to walk upstairs or be productive members of like the human race and you're sitting there struggling to walk upstairs and food is relatively accessible and relatively cheap, 
all that means is like you're taking advantage of the system in play and you're overeating, you're over consuming the food when you should be actually not over consuming the food since we're in a, an economy where we have a lot of it. So no, I mean, it just depends on what you're looking at, but overall, no, it's not a good thing to be fat. Actually, I mean, I am fat, so thanks for noticing. And being fat isn't a bad thing. Well, sun salutations probably aren't even that hard if anyone can do them. Well, actually, it's probably gonna take me a few hours to get it done. It's gonna make me feel so strong, so powerful. It'd be a great way to start my year. It's whatever, dude. If she's doing, you know, she can move her body however she wants to, dude. I'd recommend cardio, but it's probably really, really bad for her knees, given the fact that this woman probably weighs like double or triple what she should weigh which by the way if you guys don't know if you do cardio in any in, in any fashion i would highly recommend doing aerobics such as like water stuff doing going into a pool and moving your if you're like a very high calorie individual if you're a big bellied individual a big backed individual then probably water aerobics things that are very like water centric that's probably really good for you but there are other things that you could possibly do, like the elliptical. Like, if you go to the gym and go to the elliptical, that's also really, really good. I personally do enjoy the elliptical more than anything, but I also really enjoy walking. But for me, walking is not like a torturous session on my knees or my ankles. It might be for you if you're a very big calorie individual. So... For me, it's walking, but for you, it could be something else. I'd recommend the elliptical. I know a lot of people think that you're gay for doing the elliptical. You're not gay for doing the elliptical. It's just a cardio machine. I don't know why I see nobody on them. It's almost kind of like it's a repellent. Like people walk into the gym and they see those, those elliptical machines and they just go, I'm not doing it. It's okay to do those machines. It's not gay. Trust me. Nobody's looking at your butt cheeks when you do them. Well, maybe me, but that's only because I think your butt cheeks are enlarged and they're very, very nice. Um, and I'm not even necessarily talking about you, the person watching this, but I'm talking about in general, people have very big butt cheeks. And I'm not afraid to look at the men or women, but, um, and it's plus like, obviously, like if you're working very, very hard to achieve a nice physique it's okay for somebody to admire the things that you grew out in order for these people to appreciate it. Right. So it's like, it's anything. I'm just like uh, complimenting you. Right. So if you want to do the elliptical, do that. Um, I, you could totally do yoga. Yoga is good too, I guess. Like I'm sure that there are a lot of benefits to becoming, you know, moving your body in this particular type of way, but it just kind of seems really, really weird that you would be doing that while you're fat. Like sometimes I feel like there's an order of operations to things. You know, when you're having sex, for guys, it's like guys just want to hop in and guys just want to have sex. Like, you know, if a woman was like, hey, do you want to have sex? Um, a guy would immediately have his meat out and he'd be, he'd probably already bust when you said you want to have sex, right? It's probably over at that point. But for women, when you say like, Hey, do you want to have sex? She doesn't mean like actual penetration. She means like, you know, suck my titties, lick my kneecap. Tell me I'm a gecko. There's a whole bunch of stuff. There's like an order of operations to it. Whereas these people kind of like want to jump right into it. You know what I'm talking about? Like, Oh, I want to do yoga but I'm 350. Like you can do it, but it's going to be very, very difficult. And you're probably not going to get like optimal. You're probably not going to get optimal results out of it because you're doing this shit while being physically declined, if that makes any sense. So you could do it. It's just very, very weird. It's kind of like being a woman when you want somebody to lick your nipples, but the guy's just on top of you. You know what I'm talking about? Like you're probably not going to be satisfied to the same degree that you would have been if he just sucked on your hairline or something or whatever. I still think it's pretty weird for a fat person to be recording their exercise. I think in general, it's very weird for like, okay, like, if you want to record your exercise, it's totally fine to do that. Go ahead. I just think it's probably really terrible to do it in a public space. Like if you're going to do it, like hopefully if you're doing it at gym, um, hopefully nobody's behind you and hopefully there's nobody like in the frame because like a lot of people are recording in the gym. It's really weird sometimes because sometimes people just don't even do shit in the gym. And, uh, like sometimes they're just doing the workout in the weirdest way possible. Like I saw a guy the other day, I was at the gym and this guy was like, he was, he was doing, like, Smith Machine, right? But he had put, like, weights underneath the, the bench. Like, he had elevated the bench up so he could, I guess, have a decline on the bench. You know what I'm talking about? So he can hit, like, the lower pectoral muscles. But you know what's really weird is that the benches actually go lower. So, you know, like, bench solid, you can, like, you know, put it up so you can have an incline. But he, like, put weights underneath it so it went up like this. But what's weird is that, like, you could just move the thing down and it could have just went down. So I don't know why he did that. It was really fucking weird. And also, I think it's really weird when people work out like every single muscle, every single muscle group in the same session. He wasn't even really even doing shit. I literally saw this man like swinging weights like he was just doing this, like just swinging them back and forth. But hey, do whatever you want in the gym, dude. I'm not here to critique you, but I'm definitely looking at you weird, dude. I mean, you're definitely promoting obesity. So if I don't exercise, then I'm lazy. If I do exercise, then I'm promoting obesity. Nope, I definitely want you to exercise. I think it's amazing. I don't think you're promoting obesity for being... Man, what is this fucking shirt, dude? What are you doing? Educate like W-E-B, believe that you're... 
Thorough good, write like Maya, fight like Malcolm, dream like Martin, challenge like Rosa. I think it's really terrible sometimes when you only have like 15, like, <sighs> when people go like, what are some inspirational black leaders? I, I think it's so terrible sometimes when like, there's only like 10 of them, right? Like <laughs> Malcolm X, Martin, what? Oh yeah, Martin Luther King, I guess. Rosa Parks, uh, sure. Oprah, Oprah? Damn, dude. I mean, we're stretching it really fucking far on that one, dude. Damn, man. Um, Obama? What did he do? I, I don't Because he was black and a president? I don't know, bro. It's just like, sometimes I think that there's really a... Li we need more black influencers, dude. This is crazy, dude. Come on, man. Yeah. Fat people do cool things all the time. Bye. I'm sure fat do fat people do do cool things all the time, but sometimes it's like cool for the wrong reasons. Like you could fart out of more than just your butt body, your butt cheeks. Like that's great. <laughs> that's really cool. Fat, and I've always had a confusing relationship with exercise. I remember loving movement growing up, finding it so joyful. But as I got older, it came with so many expectations, like people thinking that I was moving to lose weight. Or when you okay, when you're a younger person, you have more opportunities to move your body because you're a child and you're obviously gonna since you're a children, um, there are a lot of like reasons to move your body. So like maybe you're at school and there's like exercises or like sports clubs or things that you could sign up for and do, and that encourages you to be more active. And then I would say when you get out of high school, maybe go to college or another place, it slowly starts to dissipate because now you have to actually find reasons to go outside and do things because a lot of stuff, especially here in the westernized world, doesn't really require us to go outside and let's be honest here for a second a lot of the exercises or jobs that require us to go outside are not even really jobs that require you to like be aerobic or move your body in an optimal way maybe you're outside laying brick or maybe you're outside like fixing pipes or like i saw a guy the other day like literally putting a brick into the floor and he was like cementing it in like there's a lot of things like that that are not really like moving your body optimally so even in these particular jobs um, being an adult, you have to like try to find ways to move your body, um, and get cardio in, or like if your ultimate goal is to gain muscle, at least cardio would be like the more optimal thing because cardio is like really good for you. So it would be really great for most people to try to find ways to move their body and get good. Cause you have to actually do that. You keep like, you're not going to find, you're not going to find external, external ways to like move your body. You have to look inward and see the things that you can do to like move your body purposefully. It's like taking a side quest for your life. Or bodies like mine being excluded from exercise environments. It's fine, damn. Even your dog's like, "What the fuck are you doing, bro? What are you, what are you doing right now?" I think it's fine for people to exercise while fat, and I understand what she's saying. Like, there's a lot of expectations in the sense of like a lot of people are thinking that she's probably doing it to lose weight, but she's probably in the bracket of like, "No, I'm not trying to lose weight. I'm just trying to be exercising person. I'm just trying to be somebody that takes care of myself." Which is really weird because sometimes I look at these people and I go. If you're going to the gym or you're exercising in a general format and your goal ultimately isn't to lose weight, but you need to lose weight, why, what, what, what is the purpose there? Like, what are you doing? Like, you do realize if you're going, if you're working out and the end goal is not to lose weight, you do realize any exercise you do is going to be substantially like harder on your body. You do understand that, right? So I'm not saying don't do it like it's good, but I would hopefully think that if you're doing an exercise for a long period of time that you get better and better and better and not progressively ass at the exercise since your body is like literally not made for doing anything besides sitting down and eating Doritos for 45 minutes and then getting up, going to the microwave and getting the, the fucking burrito that you put in there 45 minutes ago. Like it's fine to do these things, but hopefully you're moving towards an objective that is a slimmer body so you could execute that maneuver more powerfully, a little bit more aerobically. I don't know, domesticate your muscles more. There's a whole bunch of things that you can do. Start of the year, I've decided to bring joyful movement back into- I, I don't know, like when I hear joyful movement, I literally think of a guy beating off. Like that to me sounds like joyful movement. Somebody sitting there beating their meat and that's joyful movement. That's what I think of. But I guess to them is like cardio. I, I Like not many people like doing cardio and it's okay by the way, to do things that you don't like, you should probably try to do things that you don't like, especially in the gym, because those are usually the things that you are going to get the most effort out of. Like everybody enjoys doing the few selective exercises. Like, I don't know, maybe like bench pressing, maybe like doing curls. Like everybody likes those things, but nobody likes doing legs. There's a reason why people say like, oh man, leg day, the worst day of the month, right? 
there is a reason like people don't like doing these exercises but if you do the exercises you get a lot of value out of them so it's okay to do exercises or movements that you don't like because you know ultimately it's going to give you a lot of value my routine and as a gal with a chronic illness i'm prioritizing low impact and slow movement yeah, that makes me fine. feel good working out when i feel i'm able and comfy and cute it's it's fine to work out whenever you feel like you're able, but I feel like a lot of times when people say that, they kind of do it for like a week and then they just stop doing it because they feel like they don't ever want to do it ever again, if that makes any sense. I feel like it's probably better to have at least a rough schedule or at least a, like a, a, a I don't even know, like a, a laundry list of things that you can do instead of just going and going like, oh yeah, I'll just do this whenever I want. Your clothing. So this is your reminder that you can move at your own. Yeah, I, I don't understand why so many people go to the gym and they wear really, really nice clothes. Like, I think it's probably counterproductive. Like, I get it. You want to look good for the gym or you want to, like, impress other people or you just want to feel good. I understand that. But I always look like a homeless man, like, all the time when I go to the gym. Like, I just wear clothes that have, like, stains on them. They're terrible looking. They don't, I sweat in them. It looks gross. And I think that's okay because, like, ultimately I'm going to come out of there and hopefully I'm terrible looking already. So it's like... You know what I'm talking about? Like, I'm going to go in terrible looking. I'm going to get out terrible looking. Anyway. Pace two. When I was a kid on pro ED social media, I would always see lists that people made of reasons why you want to lose weight. And I've seen them come up again. So let's talk about it. These lists are characterized by things that are. You have a gap between your legs. People will look at you different. You won't get you won't get carpet burn between your legs. Yeah, I mean, that one's a good one, dude. I know a lot of fat people don't like to talk about that one, but that is most definitely something that happens. You'll be less scared to eat food. Yeah, that one's a good one too, because like when you're really fat, a lot of people will judge you more, or at least you'll perceive other people judging you more. You'll feel like you can breathe. Well, you, you, will, you will be able to breathe more. You will get a step closer to being healthier. Yep. It's a it's an accomplishment. Yep, it can build it can it can build determination. True, 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 true. You can be you can be posted on Pinterest. And you no longer no longer a face account. Okay. Categorically untrue that will happen to you if you lose weight. Like you'll be less scared to eat food if you go on a restrictive diet. I believe this is just like generally speaking though. Like you probably will be you probably will be a little bit. You probably will have like less of a problem eating foods in sense of like looking at other people looking at you eating foods because you know and they know by looking at you that you're a healthy format of person so you can indulge in the finer things in life. Like if somebody looks at me eating an ice cream, they're probably looking at me like, okay, yeah, like he fucking obviously doesn't eat this very often and he probably can, okay, indulge that. But if you were like 350 or 400 pounds and you were eating ice cream, <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know you is eating ice cream, bro. <laughs> I know it, bro. It's the same shit there. Um, so I think it's probably okay. Also, like, restrictively, like, what do you mean by that? Like, sometimes people will cut out ice creams or, like, very, lo very low-value foods because they know that they can get other valued foods out of it that are better for them. Diet, it will likely increase your anxiety around food. It just depends on what you mean, dude. Like, sure, you might suffer some anxiety, but I'm talking about, like, generally speaking, do you not think that if you lose weight, you'll let you'll care less about the food that you're eating in the sense of, like, where other people are judging you from? I think so. I don't... I think that when you're fatter, you probably feel more... I don't know, like, anxiety, anxiety around the food that you're eating when you're in public. And then this is a big cutoff one, but it's basically like, oh, if you lose weight, you're finally going to meet the guy of your dreams and you'll have your first kiss and then you'll get married and have a bunch of kids. Yeah, I don't know about that. I know that I know that when you're fatter or like when you're a bigger person, you might have fertility issues, men or women, but usually it affects uh, women a little bit like more substantially um, because I think there's actually a direct correlation there. So somebody could let me know down below, but I've heard a lot of women that were very, very obese and that like their periods just completely stopped for months at a time. Or if they did have their periods, it was like one day or it lasted literally a month. Like it's so bipolar when I talk to people that have periods, women, and uh, like when they're very fat, it's very difficult sometimes for me to like, it's very jarring when people tell me like, oh yeah, I'm 350 and I haven't had my period in six months. And I was like, what are you talking about? I knew one girl that literally told me that she had her period for like a year. Like she was just progressively bleeding out of her vagina like daily. And that was just like, okay for her, which is like, okay, dude, like, is that not concerning for you? I guess I don't fucking know. It yeah, I, I also don't know about like finding a man. Like it would definitely, if you're, if your goal is to find a person to be with, and you think that the weight is negatively affecting you or prohibiting you from finding somebody to be with, you're probably right. But I wouldn't also go down the line of like losing weight to solely find somebody to be with. It could just be like a passive goal, I feel like, maybe for you to achieve in the same way that like 
it's like building your character, right? Like, you can pick something up along the way, but hopefully the end goal is to complete your story, if that makes any sense, you know? Like, that, to me, I feel like that would be better. Go without saying that none of this is true. It just depends on what you mean by true, dude. Like, it's obviously not inherently true. There is a lot of truth in a lot of that stuff that was being said. So you can't say it was all not true. You can have a happy, successful, love-filled life exactly the way you look right now. That's, that's true. That's true. But, like, if you have the ability to become healthier, if you have the ability to become more of an aerobic human being, and it's relatively easy for you meaning like it's in your grasp with ignoring like maybe if you have some types of different disabilities why wouldn't you like i get like maybe you could have a happy fulfilling love life whatever now i'm not saying you can't but like i know that you could definitely improve your chances of a healthy life and all, all those things you listed if you did lose weight i'm not doubting that people can't be happy while well, fat but it's like why would you want that and I know some people are like, oh, Aubrey, why do you care? Let people do what they want with their bodies. I can't control what you do. If you want to lose weight for whatever reason, then do it. True. But it would have saved me years of pain had somebody ever looked me in the face and said, you do not have to lose weight to be worthy of love. I, I'm calling cap on that, dude. I think that, I think this person's just coping. I think a lot of people that are in these communities that are saying this stuff, like, oh, yeah, you could be happy, healthy, and all this other stuff while fat, and I wish somebody would have told me sooner. I think that... To them, they probably want to hear that because it's just basically self-gaslighting. They're just reconfirming their own beliefs. And a lot of the times, like, these people don't want to hear the truth of the situation because the truth only stretches as far as they want it to stretch. Like, I know and you know that human beings are not truth-seeking, like, people. Like, what we are is, like, we use the truth to get to where we need to go. But once it becomes unvaluable, we just abandon it. So, like, this person, for instance obviously has abandoned the truth and they don't want to hear the real information because they think that it would be concerning for them right and they're happy to live in the lie because they're contempt and it's very easy to just sit there and eat food and just be fat and have somebody tell you that you're perfectly fine exactly the way you are but is it actually the truth is it actually something that's gonna benefit you or is somebody just gaslighting you into thinking that you're fucking you know like you're living a good life like maybe you are relatively speaking you know like maybe you are like everything is you know everything's subjective and everything is within context like i'm sure that to her she's living her best life like how you live your best life compared to how i live my best life is going to be different right like for me personally i like sitting down playing Yu Gi Oh for four hours and that's fine for me like i like that maybe you like something different like maybe you like i don't know playing with legos or some shit like that or like maybe like long walks on the beach and you know throwing rocks at homeless people i don't know like but the point i'm making is like Generally speaking, being healthier is definitely going to increase your chances of having a successful life for the most part because, like, you're not being prohibited by being unhealthy. The fact that there are influencers who built gigantic followings based on their conversations around. Hey, y'all. So I want to speak on this topic because I've had this conversation with so many of my mutuals and I wanted to bring the discussion here. But before I get into it, hello, my name is Simone Mariposa. I am a content creator, a birth and postpartum doula, an actor, writer, singer, and body liberation activist and advocate. I hate when people list off all their fucking, their accomplishments. Sometimes they're, sometimes people's accomplishments are just like bare bones, dude. You know, like, oh yeah, I'm a writer, I'm an influencer. And I also DJ and I'm like, what the fuck you, what do you mean DJ? Right. And you go on their Instagram and you see like, they have one video of them going like this on a fucking, I don't even know what that is. That like, wicka, 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 wicka. and then you go like, oh, okay, I guess it's them DJing. Like, but what does that even mean? Like, what are you opening up like iTunes and just having something on shuffle for 45 minutes? I don't know. I don't know what DJ means, but like a lot of people just lie about that shit. Like, oh, they'll go, I'm an influencer. What the fuck do you mean you're an influencer, dude? You got like 4,000 followers on fucking TikTok, dude. What are you talking about? No, you're not, dude. I don't, like, I don't know why so many people want to are so quick to just – like you can't be all of those things simultaneously, right? Like if you ask a guy on the street, go, hey, man, what are you? And he goes like, oh, yeah, I'm a mechanic. You think that guy's going to go, I'm a mechanic, I'm a dad, I'm a this, I'm a that, I'm a this. You know what I'm talking about? Like it's just – to me, it seems really cringy for people to just list out a ton of things that they are. Like that would be like somebody like, David, what are you? I'd be like, dude. I'm the king of fucking games, dude. Uh, you know, like, I'm the Yu-Gi-Oh! Grand Master Champion, sh champion, dude. Um, big Meat Hero. You know what I'm talking about? Like, I'm obviously Big Meat. Like, it, it's like, why are you listing irrelevant things? Nobody fucking cares. An actor, writer, singer. And, and I, like, the actor, too, is like, oh, yeah. 
I, I did a YouTube series with my friend when I was like 16 years old and like the video is privated now because it was really cringy and like writer would be like, oh yeah, I went on like Wattpad and I fucking wrote a, a fanfic about Harry Styles sucking off like Zane from fucking One Direction one time. Like that would, you know, I'm not saying that she did. <laughs> Look, I'm not saying that she hasn't written a lot of books or whatever the fuck to become an author. But a lot of times people will say like, I'm an author and it will realistically be like, literally what I said. Body liberation activist and advocate and I've been in this community for about 10 years. Sad. First things first, I just want to say people are allowed to change. I think regardless of what messages that people have previously put out into the multiverse, if their personal choices to change, they are allowed to do that and it's not mine or anyone's place to tell them what they should or shouldn't do. And you should want to change. You shouldn't be the same person that you were when you were 18 to where you are now. Like, I don't know how far along in your life you are, but hopefully when you turned 18 and where you are now, you're two different people. Like, granted, you might have like the same kind of beliefs, but like there should be nuance. There should be understanding. There should be different ways of approaching different circumstances. You should have a toolbox of understanding on how to navigate certain things and devices and such, so on and so forth. Like, it's okay to change, and it's probably really optimal to change because you get good stuff out of changing. If you're the same person you were when you were 18, when you were 28, you didn't succeed. You fucked up. That's fucking terrible. And I hate it when people go, oh, I'm never going to change for anybody. Like, I'm never going to change. I always think, like, that's not a good thing. Like, that's terrible. That just means that you're an intolerant person. Now, with that being said, I think what this creator is saying is that if an influencer was once radically pro-fat, radically pro-fat positivity, and they openly and actively discussed dismantling the patriarchy and the body standards and beauty standards that come with it and they were very anti-diet culture and just pushing the envelope and taking up spaces of that i don't know why we got a lump in the patriarchy and that shit but it's just like sometimes they just like sometimes people will talk to you and they'll just say something and it just comes out of nowhere right it's just like whoa hold up bro what the fuck are you talking about the patriarchy we're talking about people being fat and you you lump in the patriarchy it's like very very jarring where the why why the patriarchy and you know what's crazy too is they just like throw it in and they have like zero expl zero explanation and you're just like sitting there scratching your head like what the fuck where did that come from beauty standards that come with it and they were very anti-diet culture and just pushing the envelope and taking up spaces of that person and their content completely switches to intentional weight loss and diet culture and things in pursuit of actively changing their bodies i think it can be frustrating for the followers that joined that influencer during their pro fat journey yeah 100 percent, dude yeah because if those people were looking for comfort or they were just looking for their marching orders or like they were just looking for somebody to reconfirm their biases, which a lot of people do, by the way, like it's totally fine. Like, hear me for a second. OK, I know that, you know, that's that clone troopers are better than stormtroopers. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll go on YouTube and I'll look up stormtrooper versus clone trooper just to hear that guy go yeah you know clone troopers are just better clone troopers kill you know like they're way more efficient they're just way better Django fett hashtag big dick big dick hero things such and so forth i like hearing that because it's like i know it's true but sometimes i like hearing other people say it because it like yeah it makes me feel better so in the same way that like if you were fat and you want to hear somebody else like the difference would be though that one's actually harming you whereas for me it's not because like i know that's the truth clone troopers are way objectively better and it's also like fiction but when it comes to being fat it's like literally negative to you because like if you're just going to some social media influencer just to hear the words being fat is okay being fat is beautiful being fat is like awesome and you do that all multiple times a day for years upon end all you're doing is like self-sabotaging yourself to make it to just so you can hear words of comfort, words of affirmation. And like I said, it's fine to have words of affirmation. If you're doing something well, that's great. And somebody rewards you with like good, like centered words, that's fine. But if you're like looking for these words for things you didn't even accomplish, like you're just fat, it's not good. It's just, it's literally just terrible. The truth is, societally and pop culturally speaking, I'm already like, I'm already tuned out if I hear people say that shit. It's society, like, it's so, it's so incredibly terrible when I hear somebody go societally when it talk, when you're talking about somebody being fat. It's too easy for these people to just, just drop off their responsibility on society, dude. It's way too easy. Their pro fat journey. The truth is, societally and pop culturally speaking, body positivity as a trend is over. I'm going to say something very controversial right now. I think that a lot of the pro-fat influencer girlies 
never really wanted to be fat and they used body positivity as a trend to gain traction for their social media presence. I agree. I think she's right on that. I think she's probably right on that. That's a pretty... Yeah, there's a lot of people that are in that, like, a lot of people in general will grift. Like, they may not... <sighs> okay. They may not believe what they're saying at first, but, like, what tends to happen is, like, you're in a community and you're getting attention based off this particular community and you continue to make content in that particular community and maybe you don't believe it at first, but because you keep endowing yourself with new information, new ideologies, and you're getting rewarded for it, you tend to believe it more. Like, I'll give you a good example. Like, if you look at guys like Sneeko or if you look at uh, guys like Just Pearly Things, I genuinely do not believe that Just Pearly Things believe the things that she believed at first. And there's proof of this. Like, if you look at her first, I don't know if you know who Just Pearly Things is, but Just Pearly Things is a red pill YouTuber that says basic red pill shit. But at first, these particular individuals were saying things like, no, women are great people, you know, equal, things such and so forth. But then, like, as they went down the rabbit hole of getting monetized through that, that access of, like, red pill stuff, they believe more and more of their lie until eventually it doesn't become a lie to them anymore and they've just like i don't know like they basically just like gaslit themselves into believing this shit now they have to believe it because now that's their entire thing like that is their thing so they like put themselves in a box of they have to believe this otherwise they don't so i do believe that there are a lot of like fat influencers that are not even really like fucking with it but they just did it just to get big or just get some attention 100 percent, yeah that makes a lot of sense I think that a lot of the pro-fat influencer girlies never really wanted to be fat and they used body positivity as a trend to gain traction for their social media presence. And or I think body positivity served them within that time frame and now their personal choices have changed and so has their content. Which is fine, by the way. Like, people, as they, get, as they get older, they're gonna realize that maybe they were wrong about a lot of stuff. And that's okay, because, like, obviously, you might have been wrong about a lot of stuff. Like, in this scenario, it wouldn't be so far-fetched that somebody would work under the belief that what they thought was correct here, which was being fat is good and beautiful and amazing and delectable and all those other words that you can use to, you know, describe being fat for them. And then they realized that maybe they had a health scare or maybe they realized somebody in their family had a health scare or maybe they just had to deal with a lot of problems and they just kept coming back to the least common denominator being that they were fat and that was an issue. And then Eventually, through the trials and tribulations, they've come to the realization that being fat is not the best outcome, even if they had made their entire online landscape dedicated to this particular outcome. Like, I understand that, but you shouldn't be... You should be shunned from, like, your audience because, like, it's very jarring for a lot of those audience members that do come to you for this particular thing. And then eventually they realize that, like, you no longer believe that stuff. Obviously, they're going to feel some type of way. And they're entitled to feel that type of way, right? Obviously. But, like, it's also okay because now you're working under new beliefs and new ideologies. And that's good. And also... I'm not I'm okay with people like adopting new ideologies. I just hope that whenever you do opt whenever you do have a new ideology that you adopted, I just hope that you did enough research to understand why you adopted it or like why it's a good thing for you because a lot of times people will just kind of like do like the bare minimum research or they'll just like get involved in a particular thing and they'll believe this thing. But when you question them about it like, "Oh, hey, why do you believe this? Why why is this something that you think is like cool? Like why do you think that?" A lot of times people just collapse because they have no idea and they've never been questioned on these particular th th these particular things before because they've perpetually been in echo chambers. So like if you're in an echo chamber and all you hear is people telling you the same thing over and over again, you never need to test your beliefs because you're always in an environment where that's never even a possibility. So it's really, really important that whenever you do pick up a new ideology or belief system, that it gets tested against people that do disagree with you. And it's really valuable too, because now it just reconfirms your beliefs that this is the right way you should be living life, right? And um, I just think it's important for a lot of people to do that. And also like in these environments, it really sucks because a lot of times these people don't find themselves and they actively avoid the situations where people will go, hey, let's talk about this. Or hey, in these scenarios, like I no longer believe this stuff. They shun those people. They persona non grata those people because even though they were a part of their organizations before and that they have changed their way they think about that stuff, they, they because they no longer think like that, they just kick them out completely, which is really sad because those people could bring you new ideologies. These people can bring you new ways of thinking about it or at least challenge the way you think about things, which is only beneficial for you. 
except I guess for a lot of these people, there's no value in it because they know that if they get challenged on it, maybe if they get challenged on it and somebody tells them something that they're not, if somebody tells them something that's wrong or they're saying something that they just can't defend or they just get like completely owned on something, um, that could be the end of their career. Like the, a lot of these people believe what they believe and if they ever get challenged on it and they lose, it's over. Like their entire online career is done because that's their that's them they've they've like binged on this right so it's it's tough but it is what it is man so they have no value in going outside the the, the box that they put themselves in to try to like understand other perspectives and respectfully i think both of those are okay like it's no shade because being fat in this world is hard there are a lot of external factors as well as internal factors that come with living in a fat body and some people don't want to deal with that so that's why I say change is allowed and I think people can do whatever they wanna do. But I also think content creators specifically have to remember our responsibility and our power as literal influencers. I agree. I, I'm sick of people that, man, I actually agree with this woman a lot, but I think that it's very, very telling when somebody has like millions of subscribers or like millions of followers or hundreds of thousands of followers, even something limited like me, which is only like a couple thousand followers. It's very, very, uh, in my opinion, um, disingenuous or like very terrible when I hear people go, oh, I'm just a guy with the camera that just says a whole bunch of stuff. Like, don't listen to anything I'm saying. Like, my words don't really have a lot of meaning. I always think like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, obviously your words have a ton of fucking meaning and you are going to be responsible for the things that you say because some people genuinely believe everything that you say. And I'll give you a really good example on that. Like, for instance, you know, this guy, um, the guy from InfraWars, right? They're turning the freaking frogs gay, Alex Jones. He had said a whole host of things that were just incorrect and terrible information. Now, say whatever you want about Alex Jones. He has said a lot of things that were incorrect. And because of these things that were incorrectly said, a lot of people now believe those things, right? And regardless of whether or not those things are true or false, and they could just easily be Googled, it doesn't matter. A lot of people will just flat out believe those things because you said it. And even something as simple as asking a question could lead to misinformation or even be wrong. And I'll give you a good example. Like, here's the thing, okay? I'm totally fine with free speech. I'm a, I'm a free speech ab absolutist, but I think it's like really important to understand that certain words and way you phrase these words can be very damaging. And I'll give you an example. Like for instance, if somebody said something like a question, an example of a question being harmful would be, do we really know how many Jews were actually killed during the Holocaust? That, that question is, damaging because what you're actually inferring is that there we don't know it's like it's 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 within question even though we do know like we have ways of determining these things a simple google search away like there are plenty of articles and things such as so forth that will tell you these this information but asking that question could be very damaging so i agree that like if you're in a position where you have an audience or people are listening to you it is very very important that you say the things that are Definitely that you believe like you should be yourself as much as possible, but it's really important to not lead people astray or say very, very disgusting, terrible things because ultimately some people will just believe you outright. And uh, that's why for me, I always like play the clips fully. I always include everything that these people say and I don't like cutting out context because a lot of people I know I've seen on the internet before will leave in. They'll just, my, sorry, they'll just cut off a particular person, right? Just right before they say something. Like, for instance, you know this woman on, on I don't know if she's a woman, but Jordan Underwood um, got canceled off TikTok because of a guy that uh, said that she was wrong for her, her video on her take on obese people using wheelchairs. And here's the thing. I actually agree that that's wrong. Like, obviously, like what she was saying was wrong, but not in the way that this guy canceled her, right? Because he cut it off right at the last second before she was actually going to go into what she had to say. And it's very easy for somebody to just do that. And then all the other context that that person said, like if you have a four or five sentence thing and you just cut it down to one sentence, anybody's going to look bad. And it really sucks because I don't even think for that particular video that I'm talking about, Jordan Underwood getting canceled for that is even justified, dude. It's real crazy. I just wish that more people played the video like in full because it's super easy to dunk on somebody when you don't have the full context. And uh, I just wish that people would play the video more. We influence people. We push social currents. A lot of what we talk about becomes popular within media. So as soon as we stop talking about it, the conversation shifts. And on top of that, there are people who 
follow us as a source of inspiration and motivation and representation. They feel seen and heard and understood by us. They can relate to us in a lot of ways. And though body positivity isn't trendy anymore, those same people are still looking for representation with the content creators they follow. True. They still wanna see people in fat bodies thriving, living their lives to the fullest, not focusing on weight loss and just existing and being and doing things as fat people. The desire to see that didn't disappear with the trend. You know, those people still exist. They still want to see content creators that they can relate to. So I can definitely understand someone being frustrated seeing their favorite content creator who looked like them, who they saw themselves in, now talking about wanting to lose weight. Yes. I, I mean, I agree with what she's saying in a very broad idea. Like, it's going to be... You shouldn't feel bad if you come across new information and you realize that you were wrong or maybe you weren't just accurate enough on a particular claim. You shouldn't feel like you're entitled to still spew the same hogwash that got you in this community to begin with. Like if you now understand that what you believed before is no longer right, it's okay to change up your ideology or change up the way that you think because obviously you should. If it's no longer it's if it's no longer correct, you shouldn't be following it. Obviously, unless you're like grifting to the max and you're just trying to like get as much money out of that shit as possible like i get that but uh, a lot of these people are like they do believe what they're saying so yes there are communities that do want representation and that they need representation and they feel like they deserve this representation but don't feel like you're entitled to supply that to them just simply because you've been saying it for a long time and therefore you should just keep saying it that's not the way you should be doing it. If you now realize that you are wrong about something, you should not continue to say the, <laughs> the thing that you are wrong about just because somebody needs representation. That's terrible. You're not entitled to somebody like that. And it's going to make them think, wow, this person I felt so connected to wants to change. Does that mean I need to change too? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe, dude. Who knows, bro? If you're... A, a lot of people may be more malleable than others, and that could be a good thing. It's it, it's also not a good thing because sometimes people just literally adopt other people's personalities because they saw it on a screen one day and they think that it's a cool personality to have. I don't know exactly what that's called, but I know you know what I'm talking about. Like people that just watch like a handful of videos and suddenly they just adopt that person's entire person, which is really, really bad. It's okay to like pick and choose things. Like, okay, you watch 20 people and maybe you take one thing from 20 people or you're watching 20 people and you adopt one you adopt everybody's single character trait from all those 20 videos and that's you're just all that people that's terrible um you should be trying you should be yourself as much as possible while accumulating other information to put in your toolbox so you're better equipped for the circumstances ahead of your life if that makes any sense yes people should have minds of their own and what other people do doesn't dictate what someone does with their own body yes but like i said we are influencers we influence people yes exactly so like i hear her claim which is like you're saying things that could be damaging to the community that you built therefore if you say these things in this particular type of way it's going to be hurtful to the people that once became your audience because they still believe that even though you don't but on the flip side if you no longer believe that and you know it to be false and you're spreading this new information that you know to be right, even though these other people don't claim to, to claim it to be right, what is the what is what what is the solution there? Like, are you are you supposed to like a continue with the lie because now you know it's a lie, but you're gonna continue saying that same shit because it gets views and people still believe you and they just like come for you. They they come to you for their comfort food, or do you lose your audience or lose the majority of your audience, but at least you're true to yourself? I don't know. It's a good question, right? And we need to be- I'll let you guys in the comment section decide. Be very mindful about the content that we put out, especially if it is such a shift from what we talked about before. I think those body liberation, body positivity conversations still need to be happening because the issues are still present to this day. Just because the trend has died off doesn't mean that the problems have to. And to keep it a bug, for a lot of us, body positivity is not and never has been a trend. It is our actual everyday lives. The fight still continues. The matters are still just as important, regardless of how popular Ozempic, Wagovi, and Manjaro are right now. And this is coming from someone who's considered intentional weight loss several times over my life and has had to unpack and deconstruct a lot of my ideas and viewpoints and mindsets about the topic there 
you know, even though this person is, like, saying some things that I fundamentally disagree with, I think this person is pretty level-headed on a lot of their claims. It's just, like, it's just to where the sensitivities are, where I have a problem with. Like, she's really correct on a lot of the stuff, especially when it comes to, like, being a social media influencer or somebody that makes content on the internet, like, or, like, the audience and how you retain them or how you don't retain them. Like, she's right about all that stuff, but I just, like, I don't know what the solution is. Like, it's very easy for somebody to sit there and talk about this stuff but not give a solution, and I, I, I think it's probably really terrible because she's not giving a solution. If she is, it's either, if she's giving a solution from what I'm gathering, the solution is continue to lie or I guess maybe be nicer to the audience member that you've accrued over a certain period of time because she's saying that it's okay to change. But I just don't understand exactly what she's saying or how to get there because the information that she's saying is just like – it's just really, really, really – um What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it's like you're beating around the bush too much. Like I just want somebody to own it more. Like what do you want us to do? Do you want us to continue just to lie or do you want us to tell us the truth and lose a lot of the audience? Please pick one because like otherwise I, I don't give a fuck what you're saying. Like she is saying a lot of good shit here but ultimately like if your message is none of those things that you just messaged, like I don't know. Like what the fuck are you even doing? There is absolutely a very noticeable uptick of body positivity content creators and influencers becoming weight loss content True. creators and influencers. It's the truth. I don't think she's wrong. And I think it's so interesting to witness. Like I said, I've talked to my friends about this so many times before and I definitely see it. And that's why I think it's more important now than ever that the content creators and influencers who never saw body positivity as a trend, who have been walking the walk and talking the talk, it's time for us to keep pushing forward. We gotta keep the pencil moving. We have to- Like it's, it's fine that you guys think that you should be like, that you need the representation and that like you're going to take up the mantle because you're the ones left standing. And I just think it's a weird hill to die on. Like, can you imagine understanding all the problems and the issues with being overweight and having all these solutions be pretty paramount nowadays? Like there's a lot of options for losing weight and optimally too, or like organic weight loss and stuff like that. And then still going, yeah, but we're going to stand strong on the fat acceptance, fat liberation, this type of train, because guess what? Like we need this type of inclusion. Like, I don't doubt that you need this particular type of inclusion, but that doesn't mean that you have to be the person that is that inclusion, right? Like, there could be people that go, oh, we need white supremacist inclusion, but I fuck that. I'm not going to be that fucking person, dude. Fuck that. You know, that's, that's basically what I'm here. I'm not, I'm not, by the way, I'm not trying to draw the connection between being fat or fat acceptance to, to, to you know, white supremacy. I'm not saying that. I'm just giving you an example, right? Because I know there are going to be people out there that say that. But no, I'm not saying that. I just think it's interesting that these people are, like, choosing to die on this hill. It's such a weird one to die on, too. Because it's like, this this particular hill, it could be easily debunked like that. And there's a reason why all these fat influencers are switching over to, I don't know, weight loss influencers, I guess. Because it is very, very easy to understand that there are going to be a lot of issues while being fat. And that you do alleviate a lot of those when you are thinner. push past the skinny legend trend that we're back in right now. Like we have to keep bringing awareness to what the core of the issues are. And if you are one of the former radical fat acceptance influencers who hopped on it for the trend and you have shifted your focus on your content towards weight loss, just remember that there is a fight that we're still fighting. Like, though you're not a part of that specific community anymore, it did nurture a part of you. So at the very least, try to still spread awareness for the core fight, which is... I mean, I understand what they're saying, but it'd be like... Basically, what it'd be like is like, yo, we... We were your first job, right? We hired you. We were your first job and we gave you that we gave you that 6.99 an hour. And even though we fired you and that like you discovered that we were really fucking you over like every chance we got to like, you know, make you work more hours and like advocate for our establishment and, you know, pay you way less and all this other stuff. Um, even though you got a new job now and it's like really beneficial for you and it's like really, really like you're getting benefits and all this other stuff, um, still, still clock in, still, still come over here, still clock in for free, by the way. Uh, even though you no longer believe in us and us stuff like that, still clock in because like we need more workers and it's really great that you used to work with us. So you got the experience for that particular thing. So like, make sure you still clock in and get that good nine to five. That's what, that's basically what I'm hearing from this person.
All right, guys, that's the end of the video. So I hope everybody enjoyed today's video. And if you did, I'd appreciate it for everybody to leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video. All those things help me grow in the algorithm. So if you could do any of that stuff for me, I would appreciate you tremendously. Even just leaving a like would be sufficient. So thank you so much if you do any of that stuff. I want to thank everybody that's a member or a subscriber. Thank you so much. You guys are amazing. If you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in grass because I feel like these people need to touch some. Or if there's a grass emoji down there, you can probably put that one there too. I'm accepting of all the all the grasses. So whatever your flavor of grass is, your favorite flavor, represent it. Represent the grass in this community. But anyway, I want to touch on something really quickly. Uh, you smell amazing today. You smell, look, and are amazing. I love the wardrobe you have put together for today's outfit. It's very nice. It's giving I am beautiful. And it's awesome. It's so beautiful. So incredibly amazing and dynamic in so many different ways. And I love it. And I love you. You are quite a beautiful person. Truly a beautiful person. But anyway, guys, um, I'm going to end the video here. If you want to check out. My social media will be linked down below in the description. It's just my Instagram, Twitter, Discord. All that stuff will be linked down below. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Peace.